Okay, here we are live. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, today is Saturday, uh, July 18, and here we are together in our Unlimited Network Mastermind. That what we do, we support conscious entrepreneurs and the success of conscious entrepreneurs. And what that means is to really understand that not only we need, uh, you know, take actions from a place of passion and fulfillment and abundance and joy, that I think we are all ready or learning to do that, uh, but also, you know, not only to take the action, but to really do the inner work that is necessary so we can attract and magnetize and to really feel comfortable in the new frequency of our new level of success that each of us is choosing, you know, that's individual. So I'm very happy to be here. I love Saturdays in that sense, like, uh, you know, now we are here together for more than a year and I can see, you know, the beauty of the perseverance and of really getting together and stay focused, you know, what it is that we want to to master, in this case, our own minds and to be friends with us. <clears throat> and today we are going to jump in a chapter, a chapter that is really interesting. Uh, but before we do that, I want to talk two minutes about, uh, you know, wonderful experience that I had this week and I want to uh, invite Arne also <clears throat> because we start to play around with the social commerce with our new platform Eat and our new business Igronet and I just feel like so like wow this is this is amazing this is going to be great so I would like to open the call for Arne to share two three things that he has to share and then I can come in and and to share my two things and then we go to the chapter Arne are you ready if you mute your stuff yeah great well uh, I'm really happy to the source of my existence, the the source, the God, the the the, the thing that makes me exist, because that source uh, is manifesting, um, shows up as my life, uh, my experience of my life, and lately it's been uh, very exciting in uh, uh, in uh, the business aspect as we have, uh, as we are focusing on here in uh, in our mastermind. So it showed it has shown up as uh, uh, the uh, our business model that we're doing, and it's taking shape and it's taking form. And uh, the paycheck uh, last uh, just the other day was very uh, impressive. And not only that, the uh, idea of uh, the e-commerce that I thought would be like a side. Uh, 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 not so exciting uh, for uh, uh, the, the platform, the social media platform, it is very beautiful, very exciting, uh, very uh, comfortable and nice to engage with and I've seen people do that and the idea was you know we can make some some additional money on the on the uh, e-commerce part of it but I never really uh, thought that would you know that would be a side thing that maybe down the road it will happen, but uh, uh, the the results are different. I hear from many uh, people that they they are really enjoying that as much as they are enjoying the uh, the platform itself, the social socializing itself. They're actually socializing through the the shopping. I I don't know maybe it's. Uh, mostly lately, ladies, you know, it's like they uh, go out shopping. I remember my wife; she goes out shopping, and she uh, just likes to do that. Now she's doing the same thing here, uh, meaning you, <laughs> uh, uh, on online here. And uh, I have actually seen a paycheck for myself, not only from uh, from Monica, actually very little, but a whole bunch of people that have. Uh, purchase things, people I have no idea, I have no idea who they are, where they are, or anything, and I'm getting a paycheck. So I'm, <laughs> I'm really excited to see how that, and, and we haven't even started. So I see a huge, huge potential in uh, in uh, the the making uh, a, a income from that from uh, or the source showing up as a, an income through that at the same time as people uh, people are having a really good time doing it it's like uh, uh, it almost draws you in instead of going out shopping in the mall you actually go shopping in here and you can do it with with your friends as well so 
So that's uh, uh, that's all I have to say about that today. Thank you, Mr. Arne. <laughs> well, for sure we're excited, and to me, I'm the one. I am the one going shopping, and I love to go shopping. Arne is going to United States at the end of the month, so what I'm doing is I, um, you know checking things that I would like to have him to bring me here. And yesterday I went shopping and I love it. You know, I, I use a perfume that I love. It's a Mont Blanc uh, perfume from France. And, um, and you know, normally the price is $75. I found it on the border in, you know, in the duty freeze when you don't have uh, taxes or anything like that for, I think, like uh, 42, 36, 38. I remember one part, oh my gosh, you know. Well, yesterday I find the same one for twenty-nine fifty-three dollars. So that's like uh, how I calculate, like sixty percent savings. You know, it's like okay. Well, so even if you are not in business, just for us to know, this um, uh, search, you know, the the e-commerce searcher, uh, how you how you call it, search engine, you know, like works. I mean, to me, it's like okay. Well. Keep looking, you know, so I'm having fun, you know, building up my own uh, things that I use, the things that I like, and it's really like to do a treasure map for me, you know, to have the courage to pick things that I would like and then, you know, to see them and to enjoy them. And, and again, one of the things that I like about conscious entrepreneurs or what I'm enjoying about myself today as a conscious entrepreneur is that I don't come anymore from a place of not having it or or that I need it, or, you know, I will be happy when I get it, or something like that. No, it's, it's almost like, you know, surprise that, oh my gosh, look how wonderful price, you know, but if I don't have it, it's nothing that I'm going to suffer from. So I, I feel like uh, we are touching this new frequency of ease, you know, to do things like very easy for all of us and to benefit, you know, not only from how easy it is to manage this uh, platform, but also the beautiful price that we can find there. So check it out for yourself, please. Get familiar with that platform. It's beautiful. And um, and besides that, well, now we are going to start with our inner work here, <clears throat> and we come to the chapter 14 of the Dynamic Laws of Prosperity by Catherine Ponder. We are doing an incredible work with this book. I, I love it. And today we are going to open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to the genius, our genius powers for prosperity. So let's listen to the Doc Fran. Welcome to our mastermind and master reader for our chapter. So welcome, welcome. And here we go. Well, good morning, everyone. And Monica, thank you so much. Uh, am I coming through okay? Okay, yes. great. <laughs> well, uh, Arnie, great, great news. It is, uh, it is exciting, um, uh, and it kind of speaks to our chapter here. We all had a hunch about uh, iGrow Network, and uh, isn't it fun that uh, we aligned our uh, beliefs and uh, aligned our hunches and followed our intuition? And um, now uh, <laughs> proves two two laws to me. One is that. Um, not only do we get what we're asking for, but uh, you know, source often has alternative ways of delivering it. So we can't always dictate how we achieve our abundance. It's a lot more fun to uh, see how inventive and abundant source is in uh, delivering our uh, request. So congratulations! I'm so excited for all of us. Uh, and uh, particularly delighted for your continued guidance. Um, yeah, this is a, this is a very fascinating chapter to me, and uh, so I'm going to jump right into it and uh, and start to read it for us. I hope it uh, communicates uh, to each of you today. Again, your genius powers for prosperity. In addition to normal powers of observation and perception, all people possess the deeper mind qualities of intuition and creative imagination, as well as special powers to be discussed in the next chapter. People whom the world considers to be of genius caliber are those who have had the courage and confidence to listen to their intuition and creative imagination and follow its guidance. As they follow their inner leading, the results are usually so wonderful that others believe that they have unusual gifts. They do not really possess unusual powers, 
They are instead actively using their intuition and creative imagination rather than stifling those mind powers, as most of us are inclined to do. <coughs> Excuse me. We too can stimulate our intuition and creative imagination as genius powers for prosperity, success, and more satisfying living. As you develop your genius powers, you may seem to be listening at times to that different drummer of whom Henry David Thoreau wrote, I found that if I did not obey the hunch, inner prompting, or sixth sense idea that persisted, my world became confused and unhappy. I discovered that when I followed my hunches faithfully, I was inevitably led to the right result. You will find on looking over the people in your midst who have been baptized with originality that they have let the world's thinking alone. And so creative, new knowledge has been free to express through them. The world needs this kind of original thought in this exciting progressive era in which we now live. However, in this enlightened age, we are beginning to realize that while we are humanly equipped with only five physical senses, as mental and spiritual beings, we are born with powers of the mind that are little recognized and little used. It is these unexplored faculties of the mind that seem to have genius power for producing prosperous, successful living. Because our attention is regularly turned to the outer world of activities, we do not hear or heed the guidance of intuition. The dictionary defines intuition as the immediate knowing or learning of something without the conscious use of reasoning, instantaneous apprehension. Literally, your intuition is your inner knowing. Intuition is similar to a radio receiving set through which ideas, plans, or thoughts flash into the conscious mind. These flashes have been described as hunches, inspirations, or promptings of that, quote, still small voice, close quote, within. Elijah discovered the still small voice was the voice of God himself as supreme guidance and wisdom. The still small voice is a genius power, for it is your God power. Perhaps you've not followed your intuitive leads because they have seemed fantastic and you have waited to reason through its promptings before you choose to act. Intuition is not concerned with reason. Intuition is a faculty of the mind that does not explain. It simply points the way, leaving you free to take it or leave it, to heed or ignore its promptings. Men of genius have the self-confidence and faith in their inner promptings to follow them without reasoning them through. That is why they are considered men of genius. <laughs> Ordinary people usually wait for proof and consequently they founder in the conflicts of intellectual questioning, analysis through paralysis, or paralysis through analysis. It is through intuition that musicians, artists, writers, scientists, and the saints have made contact with the all-knowing mind of God and then poured forth inspiration to the world. There are yes and no phases of intuition. Often the yes phase of intuition comes in such a quiet, gentle way that you are inclined to disregard its promptings, at least at first. It does not try to convince you of anything. Usually, though, if you disregard it, that same hunch will generally tap at your mind again and again until you do become aware of it. The no phase of intuition is often more pronounced. For years, it seemed that the only time my intuition ever came alive was when it would emphatically say no to me through an inner feeling of restlessness, discomfort, or discontent. The no phase of intuition often seems louder and more emphatic. It gives you an uncomfortable feeling that you cannot cast off unless you follow your no guidance. You can learn to contact the yes and no phases of your intuition and seek its guidance by daily observing quiet times when the mind is free of bustling thoughts, relaxed and receptive 
to intuitive leadings. Intuition usually does not force its way, but it patiently waits for a relaxed mood through which to work most effectively. A hunch can work through a busy mind, however, when there is a strong need. Here is a definite formula for developing the yes and no powers of your intuition. First, realize that intuition is a spiritual faculty of the mind which does not explain or reason but simply points the way to your greater good. It is up to you to follow the intuition path in faith and confidence in order to claim your good. All that you see in the world about you came forth because of someone's hunch or feeling that it could be done. You can also use your ideas and inner feelings to create a more wonderful world. Second, as you go about your daily life, whether your work is mental or physical, act as though you are in the presence of divine intelligence, divine intuition. Train yourself to realize that divine intuition is right for you. It is, it's interested in you, it knows all about you, and delights in guiding and helping you. To help you attain this attitude of mind, affirm often, divine intuition is now showing me the way. Divine intuition is now working in and through me, in and through all concern, producing easily and quickly the perfect outcome, the perfect result. Third, as you take these steps mentally, you will find you do not have to struggle, even in your thinking, to make things right and better. Instead, you will discover that whatever you think about, give your attention to, or are interested in, begins to reveal its secrets to you. The dictionary further describes intuition as the ability to look at, regard, or contemplate. More and more you will discover that the thing you look at and contemplate desires to know you. You will stop thinking of your desired good as a part, away, or separate from you. You will stop thinking of your desired good as difficult to obtain. You will stop scheming and trying to maneuver and manipulate people or events. Instead, you will begin realizing that through the help of divine intuition, all things are already at hand ready to come forth as ideas, plans, and methods of procedure, and in due time as happy results. Fourth, after beginning to do everything as though you are in the presence of divine intelligence and intuitive wisdom, which knows your needs, is interested, able, and happy to help you, you will find not only that your abilities are increasing more and more, but also that you are being instructed from within about many things you need to know. Suddenly you will have a feeling or get a hunch about what, you, about what to do or not to do. You will discover that as you follow that intuitive prompting in faith without reasoning it through, your good will, your good will unfold to you almost faster than you can accept it. Thus, a hunch or inner prompting simply indicates that that which you desire actually desires to be yours. Desire is God tapping at the door of your mind, trying to give you the greater good. That you deeply desire something is positive proof that it has already been prepared for you and is only waiting for you to recognize and accept it. Ask for an indication or sign that you are going in the right direction. A powerful attitude of mind to establish at such times is this. I choose this if it is for my highest good. If not, divine intuition, now send me the divine equivalent. When doubts about your intuitive promptings arise, it is good to declare divine intuition, just what is the perfect truth about this situation? Reveal it to me now and make it so plain and clear that I cannot possibly mistake it. Fifth, after having made your decrees upon divine intelligence in your midst, you must prepare for surprises. Your problems are not always solved in the way you had in mind, nor does your divine heritage of good always come about in the same way you humanly expect. 
If you are not conditioned for surprises at this point, you may miss your good. In these attitudes of mind, you can develop your intuition in inner ways that come as hunches or prompting, or as direct knowledge from the still small voice within you speaking as yes or no. But intuition can also come in outer ways as well. After you have asked for guidance, your promptings may come through the words of a friend, a phrase in a book or magazine, or through a series of outer events that take place around you. Often I have found that when I ask for direct knowledge or guidance, someone who has no conscious way of knowing I have a need along that line will often telephone, write, or make an appointment to tell me just what I need to know. When a personal or business problem appears, do not carry it around nursing it and thinking that you have to wait until a later time to get relief from it. Instead, ask for direct guidance and knowledge, and then watch for inner or outer intuition to speak to you. Begin now to develop your intuition. If you act with perfect faith on the inner and outer intuitive leadings that come, you will never be too late or too early, and nothing will go wrong. If things appear to be going wrong after you begin following your strong leadings, do not get disturbed. Affirm that divine intuition is producing the perfect result, and good will appear. Sometimes things appear to be going wrong when in reality they are being rearranged for the right outcome. Insight is another name for inner knowing or intuition out of which genius power can be transformed into practical power and practical results. Your second genius power is creative imagination. Solomon was surely describing your genius power of creative imagination when he declared, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. From an individual standpoint, you can develop your creative imagination as a prosperity power in a very simple but pleasant way. We all wish to gain spiritual control of future events and plans for prosperity. Every night before retiring, it is good to think of the next day's plans. To release your genius power of creative imagination, I suggest that you use this technique. Instead of worrying about how the next day's events will come out, or instead of brooding over some troublesome phase of it, simply bring into your conscious thoughts all that you know about the next day's events. Every time some distressing possibility wells up in your feelings, Take control of it by affirming, I bless you with God's almighty good. God's good is now gaining control and all is well. Pleasantly accentuate the positive developments that you would like to experience the next day and take control of all else by affirming God's good control of it. For the entire day's activities affirm, I give thanks for the divinely satisfying fulfillment and for the divinely satisfying results. Thereafter, dismiss the matter from your mind. This is a powerful method for using the mind to bring about expanded good in family, business, social, or spiritual matters. You can also use your creative imagination to dissolve unhappy memories, failures in business, inharmony in relationships, and other negative experiences from the past. In the realm of divine intelligence, there is no past, present, or future. You should bring to mind the time, place, and persons involved. You should then mentally go over the elements of the situation and again affirm, I bless you with God's almighty good. Then mentally rework that experience, seeing it the way you would like it to be. As you do something constructive about a negative memory, the negative thought pattern is dissolved by the loving positive thought pattern that you're putting in its place. Declare to that reworked memory and all concerned with it, whether or not those involved are still on this earth, I bless you and bless you for the goodness of God that is at work in and through you. I claim for myself and for you that God's almighty good is all there is in this experience. All else is now permanently dissolved. 
If apparent negative emotions and deep-seated feelings try to flare up, affirm to them, be thou dissolved now and forever. Your creative imagination can, in this way, uncover new good for you. Through group coordination and in interchange of ideas, many a person has been greatly prospered. When even two people begin thinking about an objective in a harmonious way, there is a double mind power at work, so that increased energy and ideas are released upon the objective. Jesus was speaking of this power when he said, If two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Any trusted member of your family or a trusted friend is sufficient. The only stipulation for releasing the genius power of good is that the trusted one be in complete harmony with you and that he or she does not discuss with others your problems or ideas. In quietness and confidence truly is your strength at such times. When two minds are blended toward a single purpose, they seem to tune in on a higher power that is filled with higher ideas and omnipresent intelligence, which then reveals to them the right way to proceed. When you're feeling low, depressed, discouraged, and feel that you cannot go on, that is the time to use the creative imagination approach. Talk with some one person with whom you can unburden yourself and let them help you get a fresh, new, uplifted viewpoint. It is at such times that others can rebuild your self-confidence when you seem unable to do so for yourself. In more recent times, you have heard of the brainstorming technique, which is a more expanded method for using creative imagination as a genius power for good. Business people sit down, discuss an objective, and blend their ideas on how to achieve it often with amazing results. A marvelous way to release the genius power of creative imagination in your family group is by having the entire family sit down and agree on group objectives. Interestingly, the joint power of agreement on objectives and the joint mind power have produced some satisfying results. Where there is a common purpose, you have great power to achieve as long as you are attuned to others who agree with your purpose. Through this process, you tune in on higher powers and ideas for making your goal a result. Just by thinking about an objective in this way, it will reveal to you its own method of attainment if you but persevere in giving it your attention. You must carefully choose your associates in order to release your genius power of creative imagination from a corporate standpoint. Both of your genius powers, intuition and creative imagination, respond best to harmonious minds. Your genius powers are delicate powers that come forth forcefully only under receptive conditions of mind and atmosphere. Both your intuition and creative imagination function well in times of silence and isolation, especially during periods of relaxation and rest. I find that my intuition and creative imagination often supply me with my best ideas and guidance just prior to retiring at night. Quiet times, reflective times, peaceful times, when your mind is relaxed and somewhat idle, are the times when inner powers are best able to gain your attention and release true genius through you. People who constantly rush about and who never have quiet, peaceful periods of reflection often have to work very hard. If they listened more to their inner promptings, they would receive such rich ideas, fresh ideas, intelligent ideas, that would make their lives easier and richer. You will feel and radiate greater self-confidence about your past, present, and future as you develop your intuition and creative imagination. In recapitulation, develop your inner intuition as your yes and no guides through watching your inner feelings, hunches, and ideas that come. Develop your outer intuition by watching events, situations, and emphatic statements 
that attract your attention after you have asked divine intuition to point the way. Develop your creative imagination by imaging your good, by mentally seeing the perfect past, present, and future, by talking with one trusted person and getting him or her to agree with you on desired results, by forming a creative imagination group and having them harmoniously agree with you on desired results. This group can either be a business group, family members, or trusted friends. In these simple ways, you develop, contact, and release your genius powers for prosperity. Never underestimate your genius powers. They want to work for you to bring you greater happiness, success, and confidence in your ability to receive guidance every step along life's pathway. Why not let them? Declare often for this purpose. I give thanks that my genius powers of intuition and creative imagination are now released and that I happily fulfill my divine destiny. And so it is. <laughs> Saturday, July 18th, according to the Gospel of Catherine Ponder. Back to you, Monica. Woohoo! Wow! What a kingdom here, the genius thing, you know, and intuition, and you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, to 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 really, um, how to say, like enjoy that aspect of us, you know. I thought that that was so spiritual. I'm so happy to read that in the sense of listening deeper, you know, like the that inner guidance and how I know it and how difficult is to get quiet, you know, like when I face some kind of situation, what do I do, or, or, you know, I have to write a blog the other day, I was like stuck or whatever, you know, to, to take the moment to get silent, you know, it's almost like life is so active, or I'm so excited about so many things that to really listen to me, to the inner guidance, you know, so that's beautiful, I would love to hear about you, and what do you think about that, how you apply it, and, and something that I wanted also to highlight and celebrate with all of you is that last week uh, I got hit by a, a prayer from Catherine Important that was saying, you know, infinite wisdom guides me, divine love prospers me, and I am successful in everything that I undertake. And I, I, I felt the boom. So I, I will say that that's my God or intuition or something will be, you know. So I start to work with that the entire week. And it's interesting how the divine love prospers me. Just that sentence, you know, divine love prospers me. It's almost like, wow, I am love and I know how to love, you know. It's just to, to, to um, melt, if you want, the separation that I had there between love and prosperity or something like that. So I love it. I think that uh, I feel very empowered by Catherine Power and all these uh, powers that we can develop and it's so nice to bring consciousness to them, you know, so we can do it easier, more consciously. So let's see who opens the microphone here to really see how we can apply that because remember, you know, we can read books and books and books but we want to integrate them, we want to become, you know, these dynamic laws of prosperity we have without having to think about it, just to enjoy, you know, and, and um, and to celebrate that, you know? Yes, tell you, I can see you here. Welcome. I think the main point with this book and this mastermind is that it's very practical in the sense that for me, you know, what I'm really learning is that when I really, something that Catherine Ponder says, something that Dr. Fran emphasizes in the reading of the chapter, and then I practice it with intention during the week or, or during a specific business situation, is extremely powerful because then I double charge intention from a you know from a powerful point and and what I'm learning in this in this book in, in, in you know with Catherine Ponder's intention and there is something in this chapter that that I used this week actually and it's very powerful about creative imagination can dissolve unhappy memories because sometimes we can be very intuitive and you know, and you know, and and practice in theory everything, but then something happens that blocks the intuition. And I think this is extremely powerful. And I really practiced it. You know, reading this, I bless you with God's almighty good. You know, everything that she, I bless, I bless you and bless you 
for the goodness of God that is at work in and through you. I claim for myself and for you that that God's almighty good is all there is in this experience and all else is now permanently dissolved because in some situations we may not be aware that there is a memory that is blocking, that is negative, that we're not forgiving the person. Maybe it's a partner, maybe it's a family member, some, someone very close, but maybe something is being blocked because and I found when I read that, I realized, yes, this is so powerful. So I was in Madrid, and I wrote it down specifically, and I started working on that. You know, and that affirmation, it, it's, I, I don't know if it's an affirmation, it's very long, but it's so powerful, because I could experience the magic of Catherine Ponder, you know, literally, you know, everything, all those blocks that were subconscious were being dissolved, and I had the most incredible meeting I've had in a long time with, you know, with, with results, with manifestation, and just putting that into practice because, you know, there's always something there that, you know, with a person, with, with a partner that we're not forgiving. We may not be aware of that, but the, the love is not there. And sometimes we're not even aware of that. We think, no, yes, that, but it's, you know, that dust has to be cleaned. So I found that extremely, extremely powerful, dissolving unhappy memories. And of course, intuition, you know, it's key. You know, what, what, you know this chapter is so important because we're so used to, to use, you know, the, the, I think it's the left or the right side of the brain and, you know, everything has to be literal and everything has to f follow a logic, but it's so much more powerful to follow the hatch and being very clear about the hatch and, the, and knowing, yes, this is you know, this is what I'm guided to, you know, it's totally connected to being guided. I'm guided to do this, which seems to be totally crazy, may seem to be the opposite, or maybe it's not the right direction that my logic mind thinks, but then by intuition's sake, and she's underlining it, you know, yes, that's a step I have to do, and I love it, you know, I'm always being a fan of intuition because I, I think that more and more in the modern corporate times we really have to be guided by that, not by the logic of the numbers or the figures or some past situation, but by the intuition. By, by that, that's something that is beyond any logic, but some, that's something that is guided, some, so that's something that is, you know, is harmonious. And then something else that I find extremely powerful that Dr. Fran, you read is about when when you work in group of of intuition, and of course you can add some other people, but you have to trust that per that person or those people so much. So I think the mastermind is the ideal context because you know in which other bet better context can we be, be sure that we we are following the same intention of of a, of a goal? Sometimes even with a family member or with a partner you don't know what are their objectives and sometimes you just open your heart and then something is there that does not add harmony. So the, what I want to add is that we have to be so cautious in this that yes, adding someone but we have to be so cautious, not paranoid, but cautious and aware of whom are we adding to this powerful intention because otherwise you better do it alone. And that's my lesson, you know. Alone in the company of God and Catherine Ponder. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Thelio. You are so beautiful. You are really beautiful. And, and congratulations for the last week because I know what you are going through. So, you know, to really apply all these laws, you know, and to start to, to you master it by practicing. So I, I just love to have you as an example, Thelio. Incredible, incredible week of hard work, but it's 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 paying off. It's paying off. It's it's manifesting, you know, and and with a lot of divine patience, it's paying off. And it's incredible. But but the resume of the week is this incredibly powerful sentence of dissolving the the, the things that were there. You know, that was the crucial point in the whole week. Applying that, and it's not that I did. That work and it's finished. I, I, I'm, I'm going to keep this affirmation, this part of the chapter, and keep using it because it's always 
something more to clean, something more to release. And no matter how much we think we have released with a person or situation, the cleaning can be infinite. <laughs> That's my lesson, really. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And to have the, the awareness to, to invoke that prayer, you know, and to, to really go to your heart and that is more important, you know, than whatever your mind, your ego is telling you, you know, about. And I think we are really learning here how to balance these two minds, you know, the rational one that is super beautiful for many, sometimes to believe something is nice to have reasons, you know, but to get quiet and to listen to this little voice inside, you know, that is guiding us to do this or to do that. So I, I totally love to surrender and to invoke, you know. And also I, I got this idea that we are all learning, thanks to your prayer here, Thelio, you know, this energy of command, you know, like command, you go back to source, you know, this is this is not for me right now, you know, it's forgive it, let you go, you know, and it's clear, you know, that I'm going with the light and I'm going with the ease and the grace, you know, so that's very beautiful. Thank you, oh my gosh, I love this intuition thing, and it's so funny because to me, it's almost like I know I'm very intuitive, but at the same time, because it's not something that I can touch, you know, I can, I don't know, like I can really detect in the sense, oh, it's happening right now. It's more like sensations, inner sense, you know, that I get about here or that or whatever. This feels good, you know, in an inner way. It's hard to define. So I love the way that Catherine Potter can develop this, you know, like to really uh, get it, you know. So let's see if we see any other open microphone here. I just want to say, just one second, if someone is on the other side and is not alive, live with us here and we like to be, remember to email arne, A-R-N-E, at unlimitednetwork.com so he can send you a link so you can be here live. I would love to have more people here because the more we can share, the more we can inspire each other. So just I wanted to notice that. And who else would like to share a little more? Mr. Arne. Yeah, I have a lot to say about this chapter. <laughs> so, um, first of all, uh, I have kind of scoffed at the word intuition uh, and I, I put it into the category of uh, spiritual people uh, e in their ego. You know, I got intuition. I, you know, I'm following my intuition. And the the uh, the word that falls for me, and that I've been uh, proclaiming for many many years, instead, hey man, you just had a thought. It's no big deal. Well, I follow my intuition. No, you had a thought. We all have thoughts. In intuition is a thought. And today. Uh, hearing um, uh, the chapter again for I don't know how many times, it, it touched me much deeper. Yeah, yes, it is a thought, but we have different kinds of thoughts, and intuition uh, uh, points to a certain type of thoughts that we have. Uh, like Celia was talking, you know, we have logical thoughts, we have number thoughts, we have reasoning thoughts. We have old habit thoughts, and then we have free thoughts. So when people are talking about intuition, I'm, I'm willing to not be so hard on them and get on and say, you just had a thought, you're normal, you know, nothing special. Uh, yeah, you are special because you were able to have a thought without uh, it being messed up with uh, your old habits or or uh, bringing in the logical mind. You were actually able to have a pure thought. So maybe for me the, the intuition would be the uh, same as saying you have to have a pure thought that comes from source rather than our, <coughs> our uh, uh, old old whatever we have. Uh, so to get to that pure thought, uh, I, I just came up with that word, which makes sense to me, uh, uh, because we all have we all have it, and and uh, again I'm, you know, in opposition to people who say, well, you know, I follow my intuition. I honor you today because if you follow your intuition, that means you are able to connect with your pure thoughts, and that is awesome. 
Uh, so uh, to be able to connect with that intuition, that pure thought, we have to get out of the way. And that is uh, something that I've been working on a lot. How, how do I get out of the way? I know if I can get out of the way, some good, something good will happen. <coughs> and, um, and sometimes I'm able to do it, and sometimes, uh, you know, how can, I, how can I just not be um, uh, coming from my, my past or my, my own uh, a, a limited point of view? Or uh, I want this particular outcome, so now I'm going to connect with my intuition. Well, my intuition then is, uh, is tainted by the outcome that I want to have, which then is not uh, my uh, not pure intuition is not pure thought. So it's I've been uh, in, uh, try meditating, stopping, getting into to uh, just being and see what thoughts can come out of that. And always when that we come to that place, that's a, a, a good place to come. That that is. Uh, feels good and it gets good result. Now sometimes when when I get that intuition uh, the second thought, uh, another thought comes in and says, are you sure about that? You know, are, are you that, uh, I'm not sure that I couldn't, uh, uh, the, the doubt comes in. So to trust that, well, if you're going to follow that intuition, that's going to have ramifications all over the place. To trust, to follow the intuition that feels good, that, that uh, it, it, it takes, a, takes courage, takes trust. And, and something I learned today more too is that um, there are two kinds. There is the yes and no. I never knew that. That's the first time I... I understand that. I always thought there were yes intuitions. Yes do this. Yes follow that. And now uh, I understand and, and of course uh, there is no intuitions. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't follow that path. Uh, don't, don't do that. And uh, I'm glad to, to realize those two, two sides too. And, and the last thing I want to touch on uh, Connecting with the intuition is is uh, uh, it's like connecting with inspiration. It's connecting with the the God energy, the, the source energy. So I'm fall, I'm connecting with my intuition. I'm connecting with my inspiration, my energy, my my life force, my my goodness, my even to the level of mission. I'm uh, I'm connecting with my mission in life and when I do that uh, I, I get I become an inspiration uh, I, I can speak I can express myself from a very deep place and uh, and touch the world and, and people around me in in a very deep level and motivate them become that uh, uh, part I don't know if it's pioneer, but it's uh, an, an inspiration. Let's do th this. Is uh, feels good. This is right. Let's do this. This is this is uh, a good thing to do. For example, uh, with with our company now that um, uh, we are working with uh, Agro Network and it, the the intuition uh, uh, to do that. It's easy for me to talk to people. Hey, the the um, it feels right, and, and 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 then I have a, a couple of evidence or whatever. But it, it just it, the the expression is easy to do, and it feels good to me, and uh, it seems to be received in in a uh, 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 like people like it. So being in contact with the intuition brings forth my inspiration, which brings forth my mission and, and a way to uh, support the world around me the way I like, I like to support it. And uh, uh, 
I, I think it's uh, doing some good in, in the long run for everyone I touch. That's for me for today. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Arne. Thank you so much. I mean, what a wise three men we have here, you know. I love the way that you uh, you emphasize the dog friend reading and how you, you share your experience, Thelio and Arne. And I mean, it's so beautiful. Thank you. And I see a wise woman here with the microphone open. Welcome, Candace. Good morning, everybody. Um, it, the, what came to me this morning, I, I got up this morning early and... and uh, meditated and then I realized oh my goodness I haven't really read this chapter but so I was kind of meditating and reading the chapter back and forth but the meditation what came up in meditation was a memory of a time when I said yes when I was very clearly guided to say no and and the ensuing uh, fallout, shall we say, from that. Um, it was something that affected other people. It was something that that uh, didn't bring me good feelings over, over time. But it also did, the value of it was that it generated a lot of inner work and, and personal searching of why couldn't I hear that no and act on it. What, what was lacking in self-confidence, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this, was, this happened over 30 years ago, so it was a good while back. Um, what I ended up seeing was that even messing up, even making a big mistake by not listening to myself, I used that as groundwork to paint new layers of self I took away the layers of self-deception and, and, and painted new layers of self-confidence and strength. And I'm not here to promote messing up, okay? <laughs> it's really not my point. <laughs> but my point is to really love ourselves wherever we go with it and to do our very, very, very best to stay on track and to listen and to uh, be that responsive to the universe. I've uh, been a horsewoman much of my life. It was like the third word I said I, when I was a baby. I went, Mama, Dad, Dad, horse, got to have a horse. So um, they've been a part of my life. But I, so I, I, I relate to things like, oh, well, a light hand on the rein, you know, as you guide this, this creature that weighs half a ton and you're just a mere sprite on their back. Um, but I think of, of, you know, really light hands and a light rain, and, and I want spirit to be able to guide me that way, for me to really be that attuned and that attenuated to subtlety and to detail so that I'm responding very uh, uh, sensitively to the information that comes to me. And I still think... You know, as, as sovereign beings, we still reserve the right to say, well, that sounds good, but I, it doesn't check up against my logic. I think I need to walk a more middle path and not do it exactly as guidance says. Okay, great, carry forth. But also remember that love is really our guide. If that's the foundation we've chosen for our life, if there's two choices, love or fear, and we've chosen love, which I clearly see the people on this panel and hopefully the people listening have done in their lives as a key, then you're going to be on the right track and you're going to be listening most of the time, if not all the way through. So I'm a cheerleader for love as usual. Thank you. Thank you, Kandar. Thank you very much. I can see this wise woman here. And, you know, I totally uh, resonate with what you were saying right now. Like, we need to, you know, we clean up. We clean up our conditioning and our limitations and our unconsciousness, let's say, by experiencing, you know, many times. So you realize that, you, you learn the lesson, and then you keep going. But the truth, from my perspective, is that 
there is more capacity, more the ability of really sensing that intuition, that inner voice, that inner guidance, you know, when there is uh, moments of really letting go of everything and getting so quiet, you know, like you really question there, you know, what is my next step here in my business or in my relationship or in my relation, you know, relationship intimate or with my son or with whatever, you know, to take the time to really open our heart, like you say, to engage from love, you know, and to listen to that heart, to listen to that love that's going to guide us. For me, it's taking me, you know, lifetimes, I suppose, I don't know, I'm kind of stubborn, but lately I'm enjoying that more and more and really comes from a place of trusting, you know, trusting capital letters, you know, trusting, I think I learn enough, I mess up enough, like you were saying right now, Candace, I, I, I went through so many things, you know, <laughs> that is almost like, okay, all of them has taught me something, at the same time they have liberated from something, you know, so I'm more and more, you know, calm and trusting and allowing and, you know, this kind of uh, a new language or new frequency that we are all touching here, you know, so I'm very happy to hear that, to, to, to be more integrated, you know, in this uh, balance between the right and the left uh, brain, you know, that I think we are closing the gap right now, you know, in this new time. And uh, so thank you, Ganda, it's beautiful. And then uh, to me, you know, one of the things that really hit me, I want to uh, say that before we close here, we are right at the end of the call, is that uh, to realize that when you want something really deeply, okay, I mean, it's not an accident, you know, today we, re we highlighted again, you know, like God really expresses his expansion and creativity through us. So when you want something that, to, to understand that it's already there, it's already there, it's already somewhere in a, you know, higher frequency maybe, but it's a matter of mastering how to download that into this physical plane. So really creates, uh, gives me this sense of joy and innocence to follow, for example, I remember my entire life, you know, I dream, I was dreaming about, you know, marriage, getting married and have this beautiful family and, you know, I love, 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 you know, this sense of home. Well, I get married one year and a half later, divorce, big drama, my God, 10 years of pain. I mean, my gosh, it's like I look back, <laughs> hoo -hoo. what have I learned from there, you know, but the intention was always there. So there is a call inside me you know, of learning, of really expressing the love that I am into my men and let go all the conditioning from collective, from my mother, from grandmother, from all my ancestors about men being this or men being that and I have to undo all of that in my head and I'm so proud today that I, I feel much, much more love. Anna and I, we just went through our anniversary like a uh, from uh, being 20 years together and we look back and and I can see you know the level of the capacity that I have to love you today to 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 you know to don't project so much of my own fear uh, lack of trust man blah 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 you know it's so powerful and so beautiful so my intuition my inner guidance that wanted that is the desire of of God expressing here on earth you know and the same thing with my financial freedom you know I felt it like five years ago I, I said you know what is this financial freedom thing I don't even have the concept of but I felt the pull of inquiring and calling and then I become this kind of uh, you know um, how you say when you explorer you know of new businesses and new things that really can give me this idea of residual income of, of something that can flow to me you know like you can be an entrepreneur or conscious one so at the end to realize that this financial freedom or this amazing uh, peaceful, harmonious family, quote, you know, a home, a place to be, to nurture yourself, is already in my consciousness, you know, so it's a matter of feeling in love to that desire and having the right, you know, to go for it, so it works. I just wanted to share that in gratitude and acknowledgement and acknowledgement of having desires in our hearts and to listen to them, you know, to, to follow them. So, well, we are here, 9 a.m., 11 a.m. in Easter time, and uh, let's complete the call. I would like to open to see if, Doc Fran, you have something to say, wise man. <laughs> yes, I can see you open the microphone here. Good. Well, thank you so much. All right, here we go. Um, I so thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed uh, this today, and Monica, thank you for... Um, 
uh, you know, the compliment of being a wise man. And we've already dealt with that, that we can only recognize attributes in other individuals, which we have innately possessed within ourselves. And we just perhaps for some reason make a judgment that that person has more of that quality than someone else. So anyway, um, God, where do I start? Every one of you triggered so many important thoughts and, and recognitions in me. Uh, Candace and Monica both talked about uh, life events, which in hindsight uh, may have been at the time uh, mistakes. Uh, and yet uh, great lessons were learned and, and in fact great progress was made. Well, that's, that is the pattern that, that's in my life, uh, in everyone's life, literally. And the reality is, is that you can't make mistakes. And this is a, a thing that I've been training on for the last, you know, five years, that we make decisions. And a decision either continues to move us toward our stated objective, or it gives us a situation in which we can learn a lesson. Or we can get mired in that mistake and make compounded mistakes and down spiral and bury ourselves uh, in that if we so choose. But the reality is, is that you don't make mistakes and every event in your life uh, is ultimately for your better good. And I've seen that many times in my life where things that happened uh, that seemed to be the worst possible thing in the world such as losing the use of my arms and having to retire from practice. That should have been and could have been a life-ending, financial-ending, catastrophic event. And um, I never went into agreement with that diagnosis. And as a result, that, quote, terrible event in my life actually proved to unlock the greater abundance for the rest of my life than any other path or event could have done. So. Um, trust and faith. Arnie talked about that. Uh, Monica, all of us have talked about that. And that's truly, that's truly the frontier of constant awareness is to have trust in the divine guidance, the divine love of our creator, our universe, our God. So, um, Celia, when you when you talked about uh, you, you hit on all the key points, <laughs> you know, love, fear, and forgiveness, and uh, Candace talked about love, and that that is we are all expressions of God's love. We were all a thought, and all creation is just that. It is a divine thought generated in love from God because God is divine love, and so. When you really start to allow yourself to view things in your life in that framework, the your 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 peace and your comfort and your confidence in life are dramatically increased. Um, one of the things that keyed into me, uh, we've we've talked about. If I if I asked ninety. Uh, if I ask the question, what's the opposite of love, 95% or more of people would respond, hate. And the answer to that is no. That is, hate is not the opposite of love. It's a mis-expression of love. You can only hate someone that you actually love. So uh, the opposite of love is fear. And think about how much time we have spent in our guidance here in our in our masterminds talking about fear in its many many forms as the largest inhibitor of progress joy happiness peace confidence etc so if we reflect a little further on that that uh, that fear is the opposite or apt the total absence of love and we understand that love is the total guiding force of the universe and we join that together with the idea that every event in your life happens for your greater good 
whether we understand it at the time or not, or perceive it as good, bad, or indifferent, in our intellectual judgment stage, it makes no difference because, you know, all events in your life are expressions of divine love, which is why every event in your life ultimately proves to be exactly the perfect event to move you towards the realization of your life's purpose, which all of us have coming to this plane of existence. And we've talked in the past about forgiveness, and it occurred to me that a beautiful definition for forgiveness, and I wrote it down here this morning, forgiveness is the state of mind that recognizes that all events in your life are expressions of God's pure love divine love. So if you follow that through, ultimately there's no need for forgiveness because there is nothing that can happen to you, through you, uh, that is an event that needs to be forgiven. <laughs> so uh, it, 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 it's kind of a it's kind of an interesting uh, interesting thought, but um, you know again uh, intuition. Last couple thoughts that I'll put out there. Uh, intuition has always been a huge part of my life, and uh, I was being groomed. I knew from the time I was six years old that I was going to be a doctor, and as life events unfolded, my mother became the head of cytogenetics at Alfred I. Dupont. Uh, Institute in Wilmington, Delaware, and that was the, the preeminent uh, children's orthopedic hospital in the world, uh, and uh, to this day remains that. And the chief of staff there was Dr. Albert Shands, who is a world-renowned orthopedic surgeon and powerful force. Well, the bottom line was is that because I wanted to be a doctor and because I was, you know, Connie's son, and Dr. Shans was, was my mother's good friend and benefactor, I was assured that wherever I wanted to go to medical school, I would go, uh, all expenses paid, and that I would come back and be an orthopedic surgeon uh, at AI DuPont Institute uh, and follow in Dr. Shans's footsteps. So as life unfolded for me, I got married, and I taught for a couple of years in a prep school and suddenly the idea, I had been accepted at medical school but I had dropped out of college so this seems like really convoluted events towards achieving your goal and I taught in a prep school and then I started to think about uh, and my, my intuition told me that being a physician wasn't exactly the best path for me and so through Nancy's guidance, uh, and we had discussions, and then I started thinking about dental school. And we had always been trained that dentists were just the people that could not get into medical school, that you're a second class citizen, and it goes right down the chain. <laughs> Chiropractors were the people who couldn't get into dental school. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, that's our, that's our judgmental thinking going at play here. So, um, when it came down, I, I, I applied and I set up this whole constellation of whether where I would go, whether I'd be a medical doctor or a dentist. And it came down to if I got into Penn Dental or Penn Medical, that's where I would go. If I got into Penn Medical there, perfectly. Uh, any medical school uh, at, or Penn Dental, I'd go to Penn Dental. Well, my very first acceptance was an unconditional full uh, acceptance to the University of Pennsylvania Dental School. So now I had a crisis. So we were studying the book of I Ching, and I think I mentioned this in the past on some of our masterminds. And so uh, I Ching is where you toss uh, six coins to create what's called a hexagram. Uh, you toss three coins six times and create a hexagram. And so the hexagram has a parable associated with it, and it puts you in touch with your inner guidance system. It's a 6,000-year-old Chinese uh, philosophy. So we toss the coins with the thought, 
should I go to dental school or should I go to medical school? And the proverb that came up opened up and started out with a sentence, what at first may seem the lesser road will in life prove to be the greater. I just closed the book, matriculated a pen, and never looked back. And my life has been an unending stream of abundance, happiness, joy, peace, and prosperity. And it was that decision that has inevitably led me to be part of this beautiful group of individuals that comprise our Saturday morning mastermind. So with that, I love you all. Follow your intuition. Relax. Listen to the voice. And have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Fran. You are such an example of applying. And, you know, I, I really get the sense of surrendering when you when you talk, you know, like to surrender to to whatever direction, you know, I, I, to do a yichin that I, I know and my mom is a master of it. Um, you know, just the fact that we center ourselves and we ask for the question from our hearts, you know, that's an opening, you know. So we can do that with the eating, with any kind of angel cards or whatever to get some guidance. They, and in that way we practice, you know, to listen in, to, to, to something that comes not from your logical intellectual mind, you know, more from your heart. So, well, we have the tools, we are made of love, that's our truth. And we are made of divine intelligence too, so we are just learning how to communicate with our true nature, you know, with our heart, with our deepest core. So, and then to apply all of that to, to nurture all the aspects of our life, you know, and business is one, is the one that brought us together in the sense of, you know, supporting ourselves to be successful and to really manifest the visions that intuitively and always like Catherine Pointer, we can add things, we can change it, you know, but to be comfortable that you are a creator of this, uh, of our own experiences, you know, so it's, it's, it's amazing the play that we are playing here. And besides that, again, you know, I just wish you a wonderful, prosperous week. Like, remember that this is um, a matter of repeating, understanding, deepening, you know, so it's easier and easier to choose love, to be aware when fear is speaking and how we follow that, you know, instead of to really get centered and to follow love that is this trust and confidence, capital letters that we can embody right here and now. So, thank you so much for your time. I know that we are all busy, but we take the time to nurture ourselves, you know, spiritually and mentally here. So I'm very happy about that. Thank you to the ones that you are on the other side, not live. And remember that we can see these uh, recordings, uh, videos, under unlimitednetwork.com forward slash master dash mind. Okay? And one second, there is a track coming here. Good. And, um, and also, if you want to attend the live panel here with us, remember to email arne, A R N E, at unlimitednetwork.com. And we get together next Saturday, July 25, 25th. Oh my gosh, it's like time is flying here. And uh, and I hope that you can enjoy the summertime and to have a really good time. And we will do more uh, prosperity next Saturday. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful week. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for your input and everything. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.